Okay, um, C3 differentiation revision. Now, um, here we've got important functions that you need to know for the exam. Okay, now the top four here are ones that you have to remember. Okay, they're not given to you, you need to memorize them. So if y equals sine x, dy dx would equal cos x. Okay, if y equals cos x, dy dx would equal minus sine x. Y equals ln x, dy dx is 1 over x. And if y equals e to the x, dy dx is the same. Simply e to the x, it doesn't change. Um, now the remaining functions here, um, they are worthwhile remembering, but they are given on the formula sheet here. Okay, This is page 5 um, of the formula booklet. And you can see here tan x. Um, the derivative is given there is x squared x. Okay, these ones here, um, occasionally they they do come up in the exam, but it's important to remember that the derivative is given here, so you don't have to remember them. Okay, they very rarely come up, so they're in the form of the booklet. Should they do come up, these ones come up quite often. Okay, um, these ones here, and you've got the results from them here. You don't need to worry about these. They won't come up in C3. Okay, so um, to fill in the y equals tan x, okay, if I look at my formula, of course, it's x squared x. Sine to the minus 1 of x, okay, the derivative is given there in the formula sheet, okay, so it's 1 over square root of 1 minus x squared cos to the minus 1 of x then is very similar but you've got a minus in front of it. And then tan to the minus 1 of x in your formula booklet is just 1 over 1 plus x squared. No square root involved there. With these ones then, um, y equals cot x, that comes up occasionally. The derivative of this in the formula booklet is given Okay, it's in the formula book, as I said, there it is there. Okay, so it's minus cos x squared x. The remaining two there, we've got sec x, the derivative is sec x tan x, and then cos x is that one there. Okay, so I'll write that down. And minus cos x cot x. Okay, so um, I'm going to use these results now in some examples I've got here, okay? So if we look now at these questions, okay? I'm gonna answer them one by one so that we make sure we have an understanding of all of these. Now when you look here, this is a, a question just involving x, okay? There's no sine, cos, e or ln or anything, okay? It's just x, but it's a bit more complex, isn't it, than the stuff we did in C1, okay? When you have this question, you should always, in the exam, write it as y equals, okay? Um, y equals um, 5x cubed minus x to the power 10, okay? Now, obviously, differentiating this, you've got a um, straightforward function here, but it's in the bracket to the power 10, so we need to think of this as a function of a function, okay? So, so to speak, the inside function is 5x cubed minus x, and the outside function is the bracket to the power 10, okay? So when you do, when you differentiate a function of a function, you sort of differentiate the outside function first, so you differentiate the bracket, so you bring the 10 down. Obviously then you reduce that power by one, okay? So it becomes nine, and then you times it then by the derivative of the inside function, the, the one in the bracket. So, so if you differentiate this, you get 10x squared, minus 1, okay? What's important here is you put a bracket around this, okay? Because you are timesing all of this, you're timesing all of this by the derivative in here. So we want to make sure we have a bracket to show that all of this is timesed by that, okay? Now if we move on to number 2, you have y equals square root of 2 plus 5x cubed, okay? Now, um, when you differentiate this, of course, we need this as a power, right? The square root is the power half. All right? Um, and then when you differentiate it, same idea, 
function of a function, so you bring the power down and the half down, differentiate the outside function, so the half comes down, you take away 1 from a half, so that becomes a minus a half, and then you times it by the derivative in here. Now 2, be, when you differentiate that, it becomes 0, when you differentiate that, you have 15x squared. Okay. Now in terms of finishing this off, and to make sure it's simplified, because um, that's what the question asks us for, simplify your answers, okay, wherever possible. What you need to do, of course, the numbers come together, so 15 times a half is 15 over 2. In terms of what goes on the top, you've got the 15, okay, x squared goes on the top. Obviously, the 2 goes underneath, right, because it's 15 over 2. And then this bracket, you can actually, because it's a minus power, you can actually take it down, okay. And on the bottom, of course, it'll be to the power half, won't it? If you take that down, it'll be positive half. So we could actually write that then as a square root. Okay, we get our answer. Okay, question, uh, the third part. We've got y equals ln 2x cubed minus 3x plus 4. Okay. So when you differentiate that, use the rule for ln, okay, which we saw earlier on. It's just 1 over x, isn't it, when you differentiate it. So dy dx is 1 over this. But of course, because it's a function of a function, you've got ln as a function of all of this. You differentiate the outside function. You differentiate ln first, so it's 1 over it. And you times it by the derivative then of in here. So the derivative in here, differentiate this, you get 6x squared minus 3, yeah, because 3x becomes 3 and then that 4 just disappears. So you've got that, put that then on the top, okay, so I wouldn't leave it like that, I put that on the top. You could even take out a 3 here if you notice 3 is a factor, so you could even write this as 2x squared minus 1 in the bracket. Okay, I've just fact taken a factor of 3 up there on the bottom then and you've got your final answer part 4 you've got y equals ln of sin x ok again a function of a function the outside function is ln the inside function is sin x so do y dx differentiate the outside function so ln is always 1 over x so in this case it would be 1 over sin x times then by the derivative in here derivative of sin x is cos x Okay, and of course, then you've got cos x over sin x. Okay, this is what this is, isn't it? Cos x over sin x. And if you think back to your ideas of trig functions, that is simply cot x. Okay, that's the same as cot x. Okay, part five, you've got y equals e to the x cubed, right? So, um, again, differ differentiate this as a function of a function. Um, the outside function is e, e of, okay, the inside function is x cubed. And when you differentiate the outside function, which is e, it just stays the same, doesn't it? e to the x stays as e to the x, so we just get that, e to the x cubed. And then you times it then by the derivative in here. Differentiate that, you get 3x squared, okay? So there's your answer there. I'd probably rewrite that to have the e to the x cubed at the end, okay, and the number in the front, of course. Uh, part uh, 6, you've got y equals e to the tan x, okay, again, function of a function, e is the outside function, tan x is the inside function, so differentiate e, it just stays the same, and then times it then by the derivative of this inside function, Differentiate tan x, if you remember, of course, it becomes sec squared x. Okay, so you've got, there's your answer, you could even leave it like that, right? Or you could write sec squared x first if you wanted to. Okay, it doesn't matter really there. Okay, um, now if you look at part uh, 7, you y equals sine to the minus 1 of 2x. Okay, now if you recall... If you recall, sine to the minus 1 of x was that, okay? So, same thing here, you've, you've got a function of a function, so the outside function is sine to the minus 1, the inside function is 2x, so when you do dy dx, okay, this becomes 1 over the square root 
of 1 minus, well in this case there's 2x there, so you'll have that, okay, replacing the replacing the x with, with 2x, okay, so you differentiate sine to the minus 1, this is what you get, but then you've got to then times it by the derivative in here, the derivative in there of course is 2, okay, so when you simplify this down then, um, on the top you get 2, but don't forget, on the bottom, really important, um, when you simplify this, you get 1 minus, and when you square that, of course, it becomes 4x squared. Okay, right, so then, next part, part 8. Again, we can go back to the formula we used earlier. Okay, so, dy dx for that, use your, using your formula booklet, because it's in there tan to the minus 1 becomes 1 over 1 plus x squared, so in this case it would be 1 over 1 plus, and of course x is replaced with 4x squared, times then the derivative of the inside function which is 4, okay, so you end up having 4 over 1 plus 16x squared, okay, that's what that simplifies to be. Okay. Question um, 9, y equals cot 3x, okay, again you've got to use your formula booklet for this, okay, so you don't have to remember this, right, you've just got this here, it's just minus cos x squared x, so when you do dy dx, it'll be minus cos x squared of 3x, okay, and don't forget to times it then by the derivative in here, because it's a function of a function, so you times it by 3. So you end up having minus 3 cosec squared of 3x. Okay, part um, 10. Um, with part 10, it's a product rule, okay? So we've got... product rule here, okay, um, so we've got two functions times in together, it's important to recognise what a product rule is when you've got two functions times in together, so we let u equals the first function, and v equals the second function, okay, differentiate then u, so you get u dx is 2x, okay, differentiate v, you get dv dx, is of course sine 3x, differentiate sine, you get cos of 3x, times then the derivative there, which is 3. Okay, so you simply get 3 cos 3x. Okay, so when you do the product rule, okay, don't forget the product rule. Again, this is something you need to remember. V du dx plus u dv dx. Okay, always in that order. So when you do that then, you basically, you're times in, you're crisscrossing on you, so you're times in that by that, so you have sine 3x times 2x, I can write it like this, plus then u dv dx, so, so x squared times 3 cos, so we'll have 3x squared cos of 3x, okay? Um, to simplify it, I could even take out an x as a factor, because it is a common factor, And I've answered my question. Okay, question 11. Right, so you've got um, y equals 3 minus 2x squared all over 5 minus 4x squared. Okay, so um, again, you have a quotient rule. Okay, so you've got um, one function divided by another. So Indeed, it's a quotient rule, so we say u to equal the top function, v to equal the bottom function. So du dx, differentiate that, you get minus 4x. dv dx, differentiate this, you get minus 8x. So with the quotient rule, um, very similar, of course, to the product rule. Always start v du dx, but this time is take away, of course, with the product rule 
of the quotient rule. So v to u dx minus u to v dx all over v squared. Okay. So we've got again crisscross. So you've got um, that times that, that times that. So maybe we'll write the minus four x at the start. Take away, and then we've got that times that. Okay, that times that. So maybe we'll write that first. So minus eight x, three minus two x all squared, two x squared. Sorry, all over then your v squared, so your v is here, so if we square that, you know, 5 minus 4x squared, all squared. Now, um, when it comes to simplifying this, leave the bottom as it is, okay, you don't need to simplify that any further. The top, obviously we can tidy that up, simplify it. Um, so when you multiply out the first bracket, you've got minus 4x times 5 is minus 20x minus 4x times minus 4x squared is plus 16x cubed. Now over here you've got minus minus 8x, so two minuses here become a plus. So you have plus 8x times 3 is plus 24x. And 8x times minus 2x squared is minus 16x cubed. All over the v squared. And what's nice here is that these cancel out and you end up having that, plus that is 4x over 5 minus 4x squared, all squared, and you've got your answer. Okay, question um, 12. Y equals 5x squared sine to the minus 1 of x. All right, so um, with this one, don't forget you um, look at what you've got. Um, and of course it's a product, okay, so we've got that times that, so u equals 5x squared, and v will equal a sine to the minus 1 of x, okay, so when you differentiate then, you do your du dx, it's 10x, okay, and you've got to do dv dx here, and don't forget from earlier on, dv dx from the formula booklet is the square root of um, is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So when it comes down to the product rule, dy dx does crisscross, don't forget, so it's v du dx, so that times that, plus then u dv dx, that times this. Um, in terms of simplifying this, I suppose I could factorise out an x there, couldn't I? x is a factor of bottom and 5 as well, yeah? So you've got 5x, bracket 2 sine to the minus 1 of x plus x over 1 minus x, square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, and then the last question, um, question 13. I first write in tan x equals sine x over cos x. Okay, so y equals tan x. Show that d by dx of tan x is x squared x. Now, obviously, this is a result that we saw earlier from the formula booklet. Okay, one that we don't need to remember, but one that gets used quite a lot. Okay, but they're telling us here to write tan x as sine x over cos x. Okay. And then we can actually prove that t by dx of tan x is x squared x. Let's try and prove it now. So first of all, as they say, they tell us to write it like this. Now what you notice here, of course, is we've got a quotient. Okay, so we've got one function divided by another. So we call u to be sine x, v to be cos x, to u dx is cos x, to v dx is minus sine x. Then you use the quotient rule, so crisscross that times that, so v du dx cos x times cos x is cos squared x. Take away, of course, with the, with the quotient rule, u dv dx, so sine x times minus sine x is minus sine squared x. Okay, all over v 
squared, so that squared will be cos squared x. Now what's good of course here, you've got two minuses, make a plus. And on the top there, we know that rule from C1, cos squared, uh, from C2, cos squared plus sine squared is one, isn't it? Okay, so we, we know that rule. When you add the square of those cos and sine together, it just equals one. And now look at your call, you've got one over cos squared, and what's created by that is we know 1 over cos is sec, so 1 over cos squared is sec squared x. And we've proven that dy dx, d by dx of tan x is sec squared x.